Hey guys, the Sneaky Snake here for Brothers in Arms World of Warships. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a game that I had in the Tier 9 Japanese destroyer, the Kagero. I'm divisioned up with my fellow channel contributor, Puddin597, and he is in his Tier 9 Soviet destroyer, the Udoi. And we're playing some domination here on the map Shatter. So there's a few reasons why I wanted to show you guys this game. Obviously, for the first one, it's, it's a good game. Great statistics, damage, AXP, you guys know the drill here. You come to our channel to see awesome World of Warships content, and we surely deliver. The second reason is we have not had a Kagero game uploaded on our channel yet, and I just wanted to talk about the ship a little bit and tell you guys why I find it to be a very powerful ship in the game. And the third reason is just because there's a lot of discord between people on how to properly play Domination in their destroyers. And I think this game shows a very good um, example of it doesn't matter whether you're American, Soviet, or Japanese destroyer. You really need to understand how Domination works. So here at the beginning of the game, me, Puddin, and the Shimakaze on our team are going to head over to Objective Alpha. Now, when you're playing Domination, again, regardless of Destroyer, your main focus is to get on the caps. And in doing so, based off of the ship class that you choose, excuse me, not the ship class, the ship nation, it will tell you exactly how you need to play for the Japanese ones, getting on the cap and getting spots, for the American ones, providing that close range gun support, and for the Soviet runs, ones, uh, providing that long range fire support but the primary objective is to get on or right near the cap and take it over and that's what domination is and you see so many people that try and go out go carrier hunting if there's a carrier in the game go attack battleships and it's the thing that a lot of japanese destroyer captains do they don't understand the difference between standard battle and domination and it, it honestly leads to a lot of losses for for really good teams that are having good synergy and their battleships and cruisers are doing great but their destroyers are just lacking focus or quite frankly they don't really know what they're doing and the reason why the Kagero is a very fantastic ship for domination is and not just Domination, any game in general that you play in World of Warships is because of its detectability. The Kagero is a bit of a departure from the Fubuki, at least in playstyle. It still has the same tendencies of long-range torpedo sniping and uh, not really using its guns all too much, but the fact that this ship can outspot any destroyer in the game at the high tiers and almost any destroyer in the game at any tier allows this thing to do what I'm doing right now. These Bensons have no idea that I'm here in this position. They know that they're detected, but they have no idea where from. And I'm spotting those guys for my friendly destroyers behind me, Puddin and the Shimikaze. Now, I do take a pot shot there at the Benson, something that you can really do well in this ship, getting some really cheeky and cheap damage done. However, I do miss, but as you can see, my buddy Puddin is getting some really nice long-range supporting fire into those Bensons, and the one dude coming... Kosimaru, that appears to be his name, is almost at half of his health, and I'm causing his friend that's in the other Benson to get off the cap, so now I'm going to sneak my way onto the cap, and short of me shooting my guns in anger and having to fall back behind the island for a few seconds, I have been completely undetected. We've pushed them off the A cap, and now I am going to begin to capture the base. And right there is some perfect synergy between myself and Putin. Our, uh, our Japanese and Soviet destroyer gameplay whenever we division up is probably one of our strengths. And uh, me spotting for him, getting caps, and sending torpedoes out at targets of opportunity allows him to just kind of mosey around unhindered for the most part and just set fires, get damage done, and help me out. And it's a good symbiotic relationship and one that works well. Anyways, enough jib-jabber about that. Um, halfway, a little more than halfway, capturing objective A. B and C is getting taken over by the enemy team, and unfortunately for our team, one of the gearings, one of the other destroyers on our team, has uh, gotten detonated a couple of minutes, or not a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds ago. And unfortunately for us, we're already at a big disadvantage not having that tier 10 American destroyer in the game. So at this point, after I capture the base, a Zal and an Admiral Hipper are closing in on my position. And my buddy Poon was telling me, hey man, I think you should get out of there. I think you should retreat. So I figure I'm going to try to get at least one set of the torpedoes off. Now, the torpedoes that I use here on the Kagero are actually not either the medium or the long range ones. I prefer to go with the short range. And this is one pro that you have over the Fubuki. You do have only have eight torpedoes in a salvo instead of nine, but you have a wider variety of choices to use. And these ones are basically Zal torpedoes. They only have eight kilometers range, but they travel through the water at a sizzling 76 knots and it lends to situations just like this where you can ambush something and they literally have no time to maneuver unfortunately however i was spotted right before i smoked up by that zal's either spotting plane or more than likely his uh, fighter plane and i have to get the heck out of here the enemy hipper starts shooting at me the zal does have to turn away from my torpedoes however so it's going to buy me a little bit more time the admiral hipper takes large hits from friendly cruisers and battleships behind me so i decided to go for a kill steel hill i totally miss 
take more damage from the Emerald Hipper, and now the Zao is focusing in on me. Now, when I mentioned earlier about cheeky damage, it's being able to do damage without getting spotted, or at least being able to do damage without having really much of a threat of getting shot back. Unfortunately, I was not able to check the box in either of those two criteria, and as such, I take even more damage here from the Zao, and I'm lucky that that wasn't even more. Those Zao HE rounds are absolutely filthy. So, for the most part, I've captured one base and failed to do any damage at the expense of losing almost a third of my hit points. Eh, doesn't sound like a very fair trade to me. And because of that, um, I've kind of screwed my buddy Puddin' over there by leaving him alone and not being able to get that kind of cheeky damage to take the pressure off of him. And um, unfortunately for the both of us, we're now losing some uh, substantial amount of hit points. The enemy team has since captured Objective Bravo, and they're about to capture Objective Charlie after our friendly gearing got detonated. Yes, they do. So right now, we've already lost two destroyers, and the enemy team has lost one cruiser. The enemy Benson gets beached somewhat on the, uh, the island over there. And I'm having a difficult time hitting him because his ship kind of moves forward a little bit and then stops completely, moves forward a little bit, etc., etc. However, I finally do land my first two shells of the game for 693 damage. So we're just over five minutes into the game, and I really haven't accomplished much. And you guys might be thinking watching this replay, whoa, what's so special about this? Uh, well, you're going to see here. Now, uh, the reason why I run the Zao Torpedoes is my buddy Puddin has played almost, or I think maybe over 500 games in the ship. This is his most popular and played ship. And... Um, he really enjoys it for just the, the different torpedo loadouts that you can get, and again, that glorious concealment rating of 5.4 kilometers with a concealment build. And he told me to give a try on the Zao torpedoes. Now, the three torpedoes, the other two at least, are uh, the Fubuki fully upgraded torpedoes, 67 knots and 10 kilometers. And then you also have an option of equipping 20 kilometer torpedoes that go through the water at a meager 62. So again, you have the long, medium, and short range variants that you can use at your discretion. And I think that's why the Kagero is... Um, somewhat underutilized. A lot of people don't understand that there's many different ways to play it. I prefer to play mine like a tier 4 Isokazi or a tier 5 Minikaze, getting in close, except this time your torpedoes are doing over 20,000 damage and they're traveling through the water and again, that sizzling 76 knots, which makes it all but impossible to turn away from. Unfortunately, that example I showed you against the Zao is pretty much the best way to screw it up. <laughs> oh dear, silly me. Anyway, the enemy team has since lost one of their destroyers. The scores right now are 355 to 497. Unfortunately, we lose our first battleship of the game, and the enemy team now has over 500 points. So we got to kind of get on these caps in a hurry here. And right now, starting at this point in the replay and going forth till the end, you're going to see just what the Kagero can do. Now, I know that there was the enemy Benson that was spotted up here in one of the grid squares. Uh, looks like Echo 4, yes, as I pinged on the minimap. So I'm going to be moving in there. I know that if that Benson backed up into Objective Bravo, he would have been spotted by the two friendly cruisers that are in F4 and F5, so I know that the only way that he can come from and get spotted by me is this direction, and he does get indeed get spotted by the friendly cruiser behind me, his spotting plane or his fighter plane. My buddy Putin is getting some good shots on him. Right at two kilometers is the auto detection range. However, at this point, he's backing up slightly. That Benson literally cannot get away from these things. I launched at 2 kilometers, and even with him backing up, the torpedoes got there in roughly 10 seconds. I easily turned to avoid one of his salvos. 13,000 damage done, devastating strike, enemy Benson taken care of, and I spot the enemy Shimakaze, who's on objective Bravo, and since the friendly cruisers are right there next to me supporting me, it forces him to smoke up immediately. And this right here is the cheeky kind of damage you can do. I was able to get a shot at him and do 1,386 free damage without taking anything in return or even being detected for that matter. My second salvo, unfortunately, is... Uh, I don't really know where those, sh those shells went, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh well. So we're up at 17,000 damage. I had a feeling that the shimmy was probably going to be launching his torps at me, so I decided to duck it in right next to the island on my left and just wait it out until his torpedoes pass by. He's launched one salvo, two salvos, and he does get spotted at 5.1 kilometers, goes back out of detection. I decided to pop my smoke. Probably didn't need to at this point, but I felt that it was better to do so. And here comes his third set, so I know he's now exhausted his torpedo supply, and he's going to have to wait about two minutes or more to get his torpedoes back. So I figured that this is the perfect opportunity to go into the cap and try and get it and give our team the lead, at least in the flags. So right there, you saw what the Kagero is good for, sneaking up on enemy ships and being able to deliver its torpedoes at point blank or very short ranges and take them out without much of a hassle. As I'm moving into Objective Bravo, I run into the cruiser. I wasn't even paying attention at all. <laughs> I'll leave a little message in chat. Sorry about that, man. No problem. It's okay. 
And since I've forced the enemy Shimakaze off of Objective Bravo, I'm now going to be able to get my second cap of the game here momentarily. We're just over halfway capping it. I mean, the Satago will get both of the assisted caps. At this point, the enemy team has lost four ships to R3. They've lost an extra destroyer, along with their other destroyer and the two cruisers. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty good. We've got now the points. Uh, we don't have the points lead, excuse me, but we now have the base lead, and those numbers will slowly start to uh, converge on each other here rather soon in the next couple of minutes. So at this point, I'm deciding what I want to do, and I see that an enemy Khabarovsk gets spotted over there next to the Zhao. He's getting some shots into the side here of my friendly Otago, and also straight in front of me, an enemy Azumo and an Iowa appear as well. Now luckily for me, these ships are at very close range. The Otago next to me gets absolutely nuked by the enemy Iowa with his front two guns, and at this point I decide, okay, these ships are definitely coming in towards me, and I'm going to launch my full salvo of torpedoes. Eight very damaging, very powerful ones, albeit with the short range again. I see that the Azumo is coming in on a pretty good path. Unfortunately for me, one of my torpedoes ends up hitting, and all of a sudden enemy torpedoes are spotted off to my port side, so I am turning very hard into uh, the starboard side to get squeezing my way in between the torpedo tracks. The first set just goes by my port side, and the second track, one of them just goes by on my starboard side. So, whoo, got through there. Those were definitely from the enemy um, Karbarovsk. And then I also have to look out for my friendly torpedoes. As I do get spotted, the Karbarovsk is starting to chase me down. Luckily, I turn just in time from those two enemy battleships. I do get one hit on the Azumo. The Shimakaze also starts to open up on me. So at this point, I better skedaddle out of here, get out of detection, which I'm able to successfully do so by running in behind the island over here. So... I could have been in a very hairy situation, and I could have gotten nuked by those battleships, but luckily for me, I was paying attention just enough to be able to dodge the incoming fire. Now, I am still detected here, but I have kind of went in between uh, the islands and somebody else's smoke, so I'm about to uh, drop out of detection range here rather soon. I'm able to set a fire on the forward portion of the Azumo, turn just slightly to starboard, and am able to easily dodge his shells, and now I go off detection because I am inside of somebody else's smoke. So at this point, this is the kind of cheap damage that I speak of. I've already set one fire on the enemy Azumo, and I'm just going to keep peppering his uh, superstructure and deck with more. Hopefully set another fire, maybe do some cheeky damage. Um, he's obviously already used his repair party because I caused flooding on him, and I am indeed able to set a second fire. So that Azumo now has two fires burning. I have about seven seconds left with the Torp Reload, and now I'm going to slowly start backing up. I'm going to get into a position to launch even more torpedoes at the Azumo. It doesn't appear that he's going to be stopping anytime soon, and he's going to slowly make his way into the Bravo Cap. Launch my full broadside of torpedoes. A minute and 40 seconds is the reload on these uh, torpedoes. A very healthy reload indeed, at least comparatively speaking, uh, to the other torpedoes that you are able to equip. I see that the enemy Karbarovsk is now making his way into Bravo. My torpedoes are tracking pretty well, and all of a sudden the Shimikaze appears at 5.1 kilometers right around the island, right in the path of my torpedoes, and the enemy uh, Karbarovsk excuse me, appears as well. He starts shooting at me. Hopefully my torpedoes will have enough uh, speed to get there to the enemy Shimikaze. I take some big hits. I am able to land two torpedoes on him and take him out with yet another devastating strike. 74,000 damage done. The fires are still raging on the Azumo. More torpedoes are flying in towards the Iowa and the Azumo, who is not on the map at the moment. And I do manage to get two more torpedo hits, and all of a sudden, I'm up to over 100,000 damage, and that Azumo has lost the bulk of what remained of his hit points, so he definitely has to get his repair party going now. And holy crap, that happened really fast. <laughs> I have just under 4,000 health left, still a decent amount here, and we have... Uh, taken the lead since then, 724 to 710. However, the enemy team was able to get back on objective Bravo. So what have we actually seen here in about the last 5 to 10 minutes of gameplay? Getting over to the caps, being able to spot enemy destroyers before they're able to retaliate, get some cheeky damage off, using these fast, shorter range torpedoes to good effect. Obviously, the Shimikaze running in, blundering into torpedoes was uh, a nice little bonus, but regardless of that, 108,000 damage, two ships destroyed, five torpedo hits. Three fire set, one base cap and one assisted cap. If I were to die right now, this would certainly be a successful game, but we got to get the win. I have two kills. Friendly Yamato on our team has two kills, so most of the team that has been able to acquire kills is still alive. So I'm still feeling pretty good about the outcome of the game. I spot the enemy Azumo and the Iowa as they're hitting in between the island and the middle of Objective Bravo, 9.6 and 10 kilometers away, respectively. Now, this is something you will have to get a little bit used to. Having 8-kilometer torpedoes instead of the 10 or the 20, it makes you very situational. Obviously, using uh, the other torpedoes, the 10 or the 20 kilometers, I would have been able to utilize them in the scenarios that you've seen here 
that have transpired in the last uh, five to ten minutes. But these ones just travel through the water so much faster. I'm beating a dead horse here, but the point is, these things are very situational. And there are times, especially on open maps, when the enemy destroyers are being very aggressive. Or, I forgot to mention, if enemy cruisers are utilizing radar and they're also being aggressive, they can keep you from doing very much, honestly, in your uh, Kagero with the fast torpedoes because you can't really afford to get too close or you're going to get absolutely destroyed really quickly. And certainly, an enemy Kagero that gets spotted is going to be the center of attention for every ship on the enemy team, as you guys have seen here. Both of those battleships and the destroyers were certainly not afraid whatsoever to send their guns my way. Now, at this point, the enemy Zumo is being weeded off of Objective Bravo, and I'm already on the cap, and I'm just waiting for him to make his way off it. He is coming under the fire from not only my buddies Puddin and the Shimakaze over there, or excuse me, the Lo Yang, but also the two friendly battleships that are moving back towards Objective Alpha, and they're able to take care of the enemy Azumo. So now I am capturing Objective Bravo for the second time, and once we get this cap, we should have the game all but in the bag as long as nobody does something stupid and throws their ship away. Moving around here, Objective Bravo, still looking out for that enemy Khabarovsk. Not sure exactly where he went. I know, at least the last time I spotted him, he was moving back towards Objective Charlie, but I have been able to, since then, um, find him, at least this is what I was thinking at the time, and then right as I was about to capture the base, I realized, wait a minute, he's been dead for a while. Why am I sitting here circling around in Bravo? I have no idea. <laughs> I end up getting the solo cap on Bravo as my second solo cap of the game. Turned a great game into a fantastic one. And we also, Buddy Putin is over on Objective Charlie. We're about ready to get all three of these caps and take care of this victory. So yeah, I had a total brain fart right there. I was like, where's this enemy Kabarov scout? Where's, yeah, I'm waiting for him to come back here. I know he's probably going to be coming from this direction. I got my torpedoes ready. Uh, Joey, he's already dead. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, man. So, anyway, scores at 920 to 826. Obviously, we got the two cap to one advantage. Puddin is over there trying to capture objective Charlie. The enemy Zhao was moving over there. I do get yet another spot here on the enemy Iowa. He kind of seemed like he hesitated a lot and didn't really know where to go or what to do at this situation. All for the more uh, for our team to get this victory. We're only about 50 points away from securing it. Unfortunately, my buddy Putin does get killed by the enemy Zhao, who was surprisingly running hydroacoustic search as he moved over into Objective Charlie. And uh, I was streaming at this time, and much to the chagrin of Putin, he was definitely a, a little flustered, I'll say so myself. So I see that the game is about to end, so I'm thinking, all right, just get a little bit more cheeky damage done here. Full broadside out on the enemy Iowa, 2,700 damage, and that's the kind of stuff that you can't do with these guns if you're able to hit uh, in the meaty parts of the superstructure where it hasn't taken much damage. More shells land in on the Iowa, 693 damage done. Zhao gets torpedoed by the Lo Yang, and that ends a fantastic game here on Shatter. Taking a look now here at the post-battle results, 485,000 credits earned, a whopping 12,650 total XP taken care of, two devastating strikes, 111,000 damage done, 49 target hits, five torpedo hits, two ships destroyed, two base caps, one assisted base capture. Taking a look at the team score, a very, very nice 3,373 base XP taken care of, Easily the tops on the friendly team. We had a very good performance from our Hindenburg and Yamato. And although Putin wasn't able to secure a kill, he still had a very healthy 1703 base XP. Was able to get a lot of damage done on the ships that were harassing me. So, what did we learn here by watching this replay? Well, the Kagero is uh, its definitely different from the Fubuki. And I'm really glad I was able to get this replay put out on the channel. Um, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video. I was streaming during this game. And I really wanted to put the stream highlight on, but unfortunately the audio quality on my end was exceptionally poor, so that's why I had to do a commentary on it. But nonetheless, fantastic game here in the Kagero on the map Shatter. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please consider sending your replays and or your cool moments into our channel. At the bottom in the description, there is the instructions on how to do so. Um, other than that, everybody, have a great day. Click that like and the subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time. Sneaky Snake out.